I arrived in the January and Punjabi won the champion hurdle within two months. So it was yeah. that it was that year. I can't remember what are, what what are we now? Eighteen. I probably so left. You're about it was seven to thirteen or something, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it was it was genuinely a phenomenal era to be there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we went from having Punjabi, who beat Binocular in the in the champion hurdle, when that really wasn't what was expected. Punjabi was like twenty five to one shot. Yeah. Um, uh, in fact, it must have been there the year before. No, I can't remember. But the long and short of it is, we ended um, my last season there was was the year that Nikki regained the championship, and I had told Nikki a year before I left that I was going. So it was always my plan to mm -hmm. go at that point. But it was a lovely way to finish it and. Um, the year before we won the championship, um, or Nicky won the championship, he we had the magnificent seven at Cheltenham, and then seven at Aintree three weeks later. So I mean, it was just phenomenal days. Yeah, amazing days, amazing horses, uh, a great place to work, and a serious setup. Yeah, um, were you were you the main party organizer? That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> after I think, a big win. I think um, so. I, I arrived there um, in my first weekend. And Tom Simmons um, was uh, first assistant. So in, in those days, it's slightly changed now, but it was sort of like a rolling conveyor belt, really. Um, the, the first assistant fell off the end, the pupil jumped on the bottom, and, and if the pupil was worth his mustard, he, he, he got to go on and, and take on the sort of more of an active role racing and whatever have you, and, and be the first assistant. So I, I, I joined with um, Tom Simmons. And I said to Tommy, uh, the first night we were there, I said, do you fancy a pint? And he said, uh, Benny, if you wouldn't mind just letting me know on a Sunday what nights you want to go for a pint, uh, then I can plan it into my week. And I thought, oh my God, what? <laughs> who, who is this fella? <laughs> you know? Anyway, delighted to say that Tommy and I literally couldn't have got any better. Yeah. Um, we're now both godparents to each other's children and he's an absolute superstar fella. And I hope I actually helped him party a bit harder than he may have once. Well, there's no <laughs> doubt, because I, I <clears throat> met you around 2009 or, 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 or then. And so you had, I mean, I remember a pretty special pre hennessy party at yours in 2010, yeah. Diamond Harry's yeah. uh, year. Um, but the Blowing Stone local pub benefited yeah. greatly from your social skills. Well, it was um, it was a it was a real shame because obviously the the heydays of when Luke owned it. Yes, That's the place, um, wasn't it? Then yeah, it was it was really very popular. And then some fellow that didn't know what he was doing. God, I hope, I hope you're not listening, but bought it uh, with all the memorabilia and basically just didn't do anything with it. Um, and when when I arrived in Lambourne, it was it was it was horrific. I mean, you sort of knock on the door and open it yourself if you wanted to go in for a pint. Um, and it was uh, basically it was shut for a little while, and then some great people called Angus and Steph, who used to have the white horse in Woolston, um, they they said, "Oh, we we're thinking about taking the lease on the Blowing Stone. Would you be keen to?" And I said, "Yeah, I'd be keen." Um, and <laughs> it's so they quite just over the hill, isn't it? Yeah, seven barrels. It's, it's literally Kingston Law, just over the hill. And they, I said, "Yeah, I'd be delighted to organise a few parties and, and help you bring some people." And they, we had some seriously good times, and, and they made the pub work fantastically well. And I mean, it, it really became a, a fabulous pub for a lot mm. of people to come back to, to you know, enjoy. And it, it was a really good time. And it, it was. Was it from that period in your life, or it's just part of your makeup anyway that gave you that, that that sense of how important the the kind of work play balance is? I think, if I'm completely honest, when I first arrived at Seven Barrows, it, it needed um, a little bit of a shake up uh, in the fact that the staff, some of them, were had been there a long time and mm -hmm. probably a bit long in the tooth and probably weren't enjoying it that much and. It was certainly very evident, um, and uh, you know, Tom and I both became keen to get them, get them out again together. I think, I think the night um, Punjabi won, um, I went for a, for a bite to eat with Sarah Shreve, who's still there, uh, and a massive part of of, of the team there, mm. uh, and a couple of others to celebrate Punjabi winning the champion hurdle. And I just thought, well, that's, that's, well, that's what it's about, isn't it? You've got to learn to celebrate the good days yeah. with, with, as a team, I think. And, and you've obviously carried that ethos forward yeah, into your own training career. Not 
it was the same when we were at Seven Barrows, you know, you still had to be in and you still had to get your job done. But, and I, I'm sure at times, you know, we pushed up, pushed the limits, but, you know, you do have to celebrate the good times because the, 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 the other days are hard and there's, there's plenty of them. And that is something that I still think and all my staff are, are very good at. They're always in the next morning.